I think it's working. So from negative infinity to negative 2.6, it's increasing. Yes, that's correct. From negative 2.6 to negative infinity, that's correct. It's decreasing. From infinity to zero, yes, that's correct. From zero to negative infinity, yes, that's correct. From infinity to 2.6, yes, it's decreasing. From 2.6 to infinity, yes, it's increasing. A sigh of relief on my part, uh, but now I have to struggle with the second derivative, which is awful. But I'm going to write my first derivative as x to the fourth minus 3x squared over x squared minus 1 squared. Uh, by the way, this is a local um, max. And this is a local min. So I already know that if it's a local max, I expect the derivative to be negative here. And I know that this is a local min. I expect the relative to be positive, the second derivative to be positive here. And here anything can happen. And I'm expecting this to be an inflection point. Why? Because it's coming from positive infinity and goes to negative infinity. So this should be an inflection point. Here it should be because it's a local max, it should be negative, and here should be positive, and here should change sign because this should be a um, an asymptote, uh, an inflection point. Sorry, sorry, an inflection point. So this is what I expect, but I need to do the work. Okay, ready. So I'm on page eleven. So uh, the second derivative. I square the denominator. And let's see how fast I run out of room at the top. So the top prime is 4x to the third minus 6x times x squared minus 1 squared uh, minus x to the fourth minus 3x squared times 2 times x squared minus 1 times the inner function prime, which is 2x. So I know it's confusing. Let's, let me take that page number out of there and put it on the other side. So it's not confusing. There is a there is a 2x in there. OK. And yes, and yes, and yes, I will definitely factor. Um, I will factor out uh, an x squared minus 1. OK, that's a mess. OK, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to distribute just yet. I'm going to factor out the 2x from here. And I have left a 2x squared minus a 3. Yes, 4x cubed minus 6x, correct. I took out one of these, so I have x squared minus 1. I took out one of these, so I have minus 4x times x to the fourth minus 3x squared. I'm checking for a second. I did take 2x out, 4x cubed, that's correct, minus 6, that's correct. I took out 1, yes. Um, I do have a 4x, this is out, and this is in. Okay, this will go away. And now I will factor out the 2x. Um, now I have no choice, I have to distribute here. There is nothing I can do about it. Yep. So 2x squared times this is 2x to the fourth. And then minus 2x squared, and then minus 3x squared, and then plus 3. From here, I took out a 2x, so there is still a 2. Negative 2x to the fourth, and plus 6x squared. There is no, um, I don't know, easy way of doing all this. But I'm happy to see this happening. Then a 2x is left outside, and this is a 4x squared. No, it's not. So it's 4x squared, and minus this is just x squared, and then plus 3. 
Ah, really nice. At the very end. It came through for me. So it was 6x squared minus 5x squared, which is x squared, and then um, plus 3. Which is not uh, bad, because this is always positive, this piece. OK, so when I said it equal to 0, as expected, we knew that from the table. That's why the table is so valuable. The only possibility is x equals 0. This is never 0. This is the denominator. We don't discuss that, because it can be 0 anyway. And if the fraction is 0, and the top is 0. So um, now I have to figure out, obviously, this is an inflection point. So it's 0, and uh, I have to figure out the signs, which we already knew because of the local max and local min, and the second derivative test. So um, I plug in, uh, let's say, uh, 10. And this is going to be positive. It's a local, I'm sorry, negative 10, sorry. Negative 10, positive, positive, uh, negative. It has to be, because there is a local max. So this is always positive. I'm not going to bother with it. But when I plug in negative 10, this is positive because 100 minus 1 is positive, but I have a negative in front. Now I'm going to plug in uh, negative 0.5. Uh, with negative 0.5, this is 0.25, but this is negative, and that's negative, so it's positive. Uh, and then with 0.5, um, obviously, um, this is still negative, but that's positive, so it's negative. So it holds water, and it doesn't. And here, we know that this is a local minimum, so it has to hold water. Everything has to, has to be positive, and it is. With 10, it's going to be positive. OK. Look at the work on several pages. Yes, I know I write big, but still. OK. When we graph a function with asymptotes, I hope at least some of you are watching. I really hope that. I don't want you to have to do this on your own, because it will take you a long time. OK, so this is uh, x equals negative 1. This is x equals 1, the vertical asymptotes. Um, I will plot in plot uh, negative the square of 3, comma, negative 2.6. So negative 2, negative 2.6. So it's somewhere here. And on the other side, because the function, so this is the origin. And on the other side, I have and 2.6, 1, 2.6. OK. At this point, I have to stop and determine how to find the slant asymptote. And I think I'm on 12. So we will divide x to the third by x squared minus 1. The quotient, only the quotient, of this division is the slant asymptote. I'm dividing x cubed by x squared minus 1. Now, before we continue, you understand why there is a slant asymptote. Because when I divide degree 10 by degree 9, I will get a line, degree 1. When I divide degree 15 by degree 14, I get a line, degree 1. When I divide degree 3 by degree 2, I get a line, degree 1. So that's why x squared times what is x cubed? The answer is x. But I have to go back and distribute. x times x squared is x cubed. We need to change the sign. x times negative 1 is negative x. I cannot write under x squared. I have to write under, and I have to change the sign, negative x. 
So this is nothing, and even if I write the positive x, I cannot continue. So basically what I'm saying is that x cubed over x squared minus 1 is x plus x over x squared minus 1. Can I check this? Very easily. x squared times x, when I multiply these two and add x, x to the third minus x actually plus x, and I get x to the third. So only this, only the quotient. This is the quotient, this is the remainder, and this is the divisor. Only the quotient, y equals x, is the slant asymptote. And it has to be graphed. So somewhere next to the table, close by, I will write y equals x slant asymptote so I don't forget. I know how to graph this. This is the simplest possible linear function. It's, it bisects it bisects the uh, first and the third quadrants. So this is y equals x, the slant asymptote. So this function has two vertical asymptotes and a slant asymptote. OK, finally, I'm ready to, to graph. How do I put these? Maybe like that. OK. It's coming from negative infinity, of course, approaching the asymptote. Opening downward, increasing to negative 2.6. Still opening downward, but now decreasing to negative infinity. Not a problem. Here it is. Approaching the asymptote, coming to a maximum, and coming down, approaching the asymptote. So this is the local max. Coming from negative infinity, increasing to the local max, coming back to negative infinity, approaching the other asymptote. In the middle, this is a piece of cake, I should say, coming from positive infinity, opening up, crossing where it has the inflection point, and coming down to negative infinity. No problem here. Opening up, because this is the inflection point, and now changing concavity, opening down. It's symmetric. I don't even need to look. It has to be over there, but it is from infinity on the side coming down to the local minimum and going asymptotically. It has to approach the asymptote towards infinity. I didn't need that because I saw it here. So this is the local min and going up. And this was f of x, x cubed over x squared minus 1. A lot of work. How many pages? I don't even want to count. Any questions on this? Um, why is this equals 1 the vertical asymptote? Say it again. Then why is x equals 1 and negative the vertical asymptote? Why they are asymptotes? Yeah. Because the function is undefined at negative 1 and 1. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Other questions for me, please? Anything else? Anything else? Anything else? Okay, one uh, application that I would like to um, Look at just. Uh, I know we only have like six or seven minutes roughly. I just want to um, look at one application in the next section of 2.4 that deals with max min. And we have other applications in that section, but uh, just one for now. So 2.4 max min. And I think I'm on page, who knows what page I'm on. I think it's 13. OK. So I'd like to look at uh, labor. Problem 100 on page 242.
The percentage of women aged 21 through 54 in the US <coughs> civilian labor force can be modeled by. So we are given the function negative 0 0.0135 x squared plus 0.265 x plus 74.6. I don't like quadratic functions in calculus because you can use the vertex to determine maximum. Where x is the number of years since 1992. So x equals 0 represents 1992. Uh, based on the data from such and such, according to this model, in what year during the period 1992 to 2012 uh, was this percentage a maximum? Well, we'll use calculus. I have to find f prime, which will be so uh, 270, 270, zero, zero, right, negative point. So that's x plus. 0.265. When I set this equal to 0, I will get that x equals 0.265 divided by uh, 0 0.0270. Because they are both negative, of course, the number of years has to be positive. So uh, 0 0.65 divided by 0 0.0270 is uh, 9.8. So 9.8 is uh, roughly nine years since 1992. So when I add that, I get 2001. But that's not sufficient. The only point I wanted to make here is show that it, not it, x equals 9 gives a max. So what I have to show is not the entire table, just this, um, with 9 and 0. And I have to study the sign. But this is a linear function with a negative leading coefficient. So this is the sign positive to negative. Or you plug in numbers. And this is typical for a local max. Now, if I'm asked to find local max, I have to find f of 9 to be exact, whatever that was, uh, 8 point, what was it? I should have um, um, 9.8. Um, I would have rounded up to 10, but it doesn't matter per se. I'm just making a point. So if you want, put 9.81. So this is the maximum. And I will put in the calculator, since I only want one value, negative 0 0.0135 uh, multiplied by, I'm going to put the previous answer because I still have it there, squared. And then plus 0.265 multiplied by the previous answer, and then plus 74.6. And the maximum is 75.9. Now the measurement unit. What is the measurement unit in this case? 79.5. So um, x is the number of years. And this is the percentage. So the percentage, according to the model, in what year during this such and such was the percentage a maximum. So that is the percentage, the maximum percentage. So it's not sufficient to say, oh, x equals 9, and I'm done. Because you will see in certain situations, you may have a max and a min, and you don't know which one it is. So you still have to show why that particular value gives a maximum, or a minimum, for that matter.